Okay. Let's take another look at dynamic customer lifetime value calculation in a spreadsheet that's set up a little differently than the previous example. So let's look over here uh, at our historical data and historical data of potential model inputs. This is a different hypothetical business that we're talking about. And the spreadsheet is set up differently because if you look here, each row represents a different customer. So in the previous spreadsheet, we had just sort of one customer built into that entire spreadsheet. Here, each row is a different customer. And our goal is to calculate the customer lifetime value for each one of these customers. In this particular instance, we see we have some historical information about revenue and whether or not the customer was active in the previous periods. So this is just historical data we know about them. We also know we have some historical data about how we've treated our customers in the past. So this word discount here, by the way, this is not the discount rate in terms of the CLV calculation. This is rather like the actual discount that we give our customers. Like if they spend a hundred dollars and they get a discount of eight, they get a discount of $8. And then here's upsells and cross sells. These are the number of targeted mailers that we've mailed them trying to get the customer either uh, and through an upselling activity, right? Us trying to get them to upgrade to like a more premium version and then cross-selling uh, a direct mailer that was focused on getting them to buy in different product categories of things that we sell. So sort of different strategies. So this first customer here, they had a discount of about an 8%. They have upsell, we sent two, we sent seven to them, okay? And we can see that we've varied our, our strategy to these different customers. And the other thing we should notice is, holy cow, we actually have lots of customers. Notice here, we have row nine, then row a thousand. If I right click on this and I unhide this just for a second, oh wow, we have thousand customers. They're all hidden. Oh boy, we go ahead and rehide that. So we don't need to worry about every one of those customers. We just need to keep in mind that they are there. Let's see if we can calculate the parts of the customer lifetime value calculation for just this first one. If we can get it right for the first one, we probably can get it right for all the other ones with a little clever dragging activity. Okay, so how in the world are we gonna calculate whether or not a customer is active in the future, right? Their revenue and their costs. Hmm, ah, luckily somebody has already done some work for us. Let's go to this calibrated parameters tab. What am I looking at here? Ah, somebody else had must have already ran like a linear regression model to build a forecast for revenue. And someone else must have also already calculated the probability that a customer is active using logistic regression. And what I can see here is that for the revenue, we have some information. Uh, these are our parameters, our beta parameters. They must have not used account activity, it's just not part of that model, but they did use last two revenues and they used information about uh, discount upsells and cross sells. And then for logistic regression, they must have used account activity, but not the revenue. Okay. And then discount upsells and cross sells. I'm going to just, just copy and paste this over into uh, this worksheet. doesn't matter where I put it. And it's going to make it a little easier for me to sort of complete my calculations. Okay. So let's see, first let's do, let's do revenue first. We have a simple linear model. So the simple form of the linear model is equals uh, first the intercept. There's my intercept. F, uh, well, let's see, H1023. Just make sure you're referring to wherever you pasted yours. Plus, ah, uh, okay, let's see, revenue two, that parameter, and I lock that in. Times and of course revenue two is connected to here, right? That is the one hundred and three dollars for that previous customer. Notice I don't want to lock that one because I want to be able to drag that 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 reference later. Okay. Next, again, I have my revenue one, and that parameter I do want to lock in. And so on. And I just kind of proceed in the standard workabout fashion here. Discount. Okay. Four plus. 
Boop. And of course, if you make a few sounds while you're doing Excel spreadsheet modeling, it makes things a little more fun. Boop. And finally, cross cells. Of course, lots of opportunities to make a little typo here. So you have to look very carefully, make sure you have your cells referenced correctly. But the goal here is going to be make sure you have all of these beta parameters, and they should never change for the different customers. But these, the rows, the input amounts for historical data should change. So here's for customer one. And I can just, if I drag this down. Now, as I dragged this down, remember I skipped, or it might have seemed like I skipped all the people that are hidden here from eight to 1001, but that's not true. When I dragged my function all the way down to row 1004, all those hidden rows still received the equation as well. So it's all in there. What do we see? And let's see, I'll check my work. So I'll go down to this last cell here, K1004, and I'll see if my function looks correct. Oh, it does, great. I have all of my input values for that customer referred to and all of my revenue linear model is referred to as well. Great, okay, so revenue's done. Let's do P active, all right. This time I have to maybe I have to do the logistic model. The way that I like to do this is I first just build the lower linear component and then I wrap the whole thing in the little logistic part. So I'll just proceed as I, had, I did previously. All right, this equals the intercept F4 plus, and then count to, same deal. Okay. So this is not done, right? This is just the linear component, I've had, but I want to do the logistic model. So what I do here, I can wrap this whole thing in parentheses. And then to set up the logistic form of this, it's one divided by, in another parenthesis, one plus E X P, another parenthesis, negative one times. And just wrap that whole thing and close it off. Make sure we have all of our spreadsheets set up. There we go. So just inspect this carefully. And one of the ways that we'll know this is working correctly is one of the nice characteristics of the logistic function is that these values cannot take on any values other than between zero and 100%, or in other words, 0.28 or 0.57, right? I have it set up to show percentages here though, uh, just with formatting in Excel. Okay, and then for our forecasted costs, our marketing costs, there's a little hint here that says, actually, we only want to account first the, for the cross sells and upsells here, the activity, the discount part, this thing here, we'll deal with that later in the formal equation. We'll see, we'll see why. Okay. So according to the case, it was 75 uh, cents per cross sell and upsell. So I'm just gonna type in 75 cents here. You don't have to do it this way, but maybe that number changes later. So I'm gonna just keep in mind that, okay, it's 75 cents. So to calculate this, it would simply just be the sum of cross sells and upsells or, or two plus seven, just add those two cells together times our cost here. And of course, freeze the cost. So it costs us about $6.75 for this customer. And drag that down. There's our costs. Great. And on this spreadsheet, there's already some pre-baked in summary stats that were calculated. So we can already kind of interpret some basic things that we know about our customers. For example, the amongst this like almost thousand customers, the average retention rate is about 72%. According to the forecasts, our minimum is 22, max is 98. Okay. Uh, average forecasted revenue. Um, which we'll interpret as margin is $71 and min 22, max 116 per period. Okay, very cool. Now it's time to smush all this together and calculate forecasted future uh, cash flows. How are we gonna do this? Well, first, we should take notice that apparently the way that this future cash flow is being forecasted isn't per year, it's per half year. See that? Half a year, year one, one and a half, two. 
doesn't really change anything. We're just, when we complete our customer lifetime value calculation, we'll just implement it for each of those uh, units. So calculate here. Let's see if we can get this done. Let's see, what are the things that we need to account for? Well, we have our revenue minus our costs times the probability that they're active to the power of time period. And we're going to make some adjustments here. So keep, keep locked in as we do this. Okay. So I'll wrap that whole thing. And then I'm going to divide one plus, and this is the discount rate up here, the 25%. That's us discounting. We have the word discount twice. It can be confusing. Discount rate, this is us discounting the future cash flow of money. So that 25% and one, that is going to stay always fixed, right? It's, we're locking that in. And that's also all wrapped into the power of the time period here. We're not done yet. Something is not right, okay? First, we look at this equation again. We're missing a part of this. What I mean by missing a part is we're missing the fact that we have a discount that we reward the customer with based on what they buy. How do we incorporate this into our model? Let's think about this. In this equation, uh, K right now, K5 at least, represents my revenue, my future revenue. If I think that this customer is going to make me uh, $57.43 in revenue. Well, that also means I'm going to be giving them, at least according to this first customer, an 8% discount. So I can bake that reference into the formula here. What I'll do is I'll take that K5 minus L5, and I'll also subtract again one more time. K5, this is the revenue. Now, why am I subtracting that? Well, I'm going to subtract just the percentage of it. So K5 times this 8. And of course, the 8 is going to have to be divided by 100 to represent 8%. Let's look at this little function a little more closely. Okay. So now that first K5 is our forecasted revenue, minus L5, that's our upsell and cross-sell cost, minus second K5, but that K5 is getting multiplied by the 8%. So that's representing that discount that we're going to give right back to the customer, assuming they're active, right? Okay, so now we're still not quite finished just yet because look what happens when I drag this function down. Ooh, a lot of zeros. That should just sort of indicate something's wrong. What happened here? If I look at my last row here, I realize, oh, shoot. I want to always be referring to this row for my time period. So let me delete everything except for my N5 here. And what I need to fix here is I need to find where those N3s are. Yep, that's my time period. And I don't want them to be, I want them to be able to go to the right across columns when I drag. But I don't want them to go down. The way to lock that in is to put a number, oh, I'm sorry, a dollar sign just in front of the, only in front of the three for N3. Just verify that looks good. Yep. And then also, if this is, if this is all working correctly, just be able to drag, just be able to drag this whole thing over to the next cell, right? And right away, we're like, uh-oh, numbers jumped. Something probably went wrong. Let's inspect close and see what else needs to get repaired. So I go to like, oh, 1004 here, click in. Ah, there's my mistake. Look how in K, L, and M, my cells shifted to the right as I dragged to the right. That's incorrect. We got to fix that. All right, let's go all the way back to our very first cell that we were building this in here, N5. How do we fix this? We want to make sure that J, K, and L, we do want those to be able to go down when we drag down, but we do not want them to shift columns when we drag to the right. To fix that, 
take the K. This time we're gonna put the dollar signs in front of the letters, not the numbers. So for K, we put a dollar sign in front of K for K5, but not the five, just the K. Put a dollar sign in front of the L. Put a dollar sign in front of the K. Put a dollar sign in front of, are we good actually? Oh, oh, and the J here, I missed it. And I think we're now good. Okay. Drag that down, things look good. And let's drag it to the right. Ah, yeah, things look much better. Great. So at this point, we should be able to drag all the way across. Oops. There is a mistake, see? There's the mistake. Ah, oh, I was dragging over. I was dragging over. I forgot to lock in our, our discount. Okay, got to fix it. Delete all of this so I don't get confused. Oops. Go back to that original cell that I was working in and make sure I fix column E in place as well. So it's just a dollar sign in front of the E, not in front of the five. There we go. Whew. See if that looks better as we drag. Yes, now things are in great shape. Gotta check your work. Okay. Now that we have for each one of these time periods, the discounted cash flow for that particular time period, if we wanna know the customer lifetime value of those customers, we simply sum all this up. So here in this very last, we simply do a sum and just sum them all up and voila. Great. Ta-da. We have successfully calculated the customer lifetime value for each one of these thousand customers. I can now unhide this if I want to see all of it. Here we go. Look at all those values. Good job. So now we actually can calculate something called total customer equity. Total customer equity is literally just take the customer lifetime value of each customer and add them all together. It's the total value of your current customer investment. So we can just then sum up all of this stuff. Wonderful. And boom. That is the total present value based on future forecasts of our, of this customer base. Good thing it's positive. <laughs> now, what else can we do with this spreadsheet? I'm going to be stopping here because there's more work that you still need to do in, if there's an assignment file, but things to think about. Well, now that we have calculations that are based on discounts, upsells and cross sells, you could maybe copy this spreadsheet, make a duplicate and start playing around with these numbers, changing the number of upsells, the number of cross sells that we send as a way to sort of optimize future forecasts, right? Because their future lifetime value right now is based on assuming that we keep doing the same historical behavior we had in the past, but you could change these values. You could test other hypothetical scenarios. Wish you luck out there in the land of Excel spreadsheeting customer lifetime value.